Hello gamers, this is Rushcode. In today's video, I wanted to go over what I did for the pause and quit game menus for my classroom game. But before that, I realized I forgot to mention something about the start menu in the previous video. So in the start menu, when you click play game, this will go into the graph which will open a level which is our first person map level, which is this one over here, and then it will set the input mode. Now, something about this is that you only get the game input mode when it starts from the start menu map, which is this blank map over here. So from this map, if we played, it'll play the game and you go into the game and you have the input mode engaged for it. However, if you want to do it for debugging purposes on the first person map, it's going to look a bit different. So if I played right now, the mouse is still the input and not the game. And you have to click to be able to do that. So the reason for that is because this level itself does not have this input mode game only thing set. So what you can do is open the level blueprint for this map itself and then right click and get the begin play component thing. So uh, event begin play and then from here set the input mode input mode to game only and this should work. So play a controller and this should work when you play it. So now you can see it immediately jumps into game mode only, which is great. The other thing I wanted to mention about the start menu was that when you package your game through file, uh, let me see, file, package project, and let's say Windows 64 bit, it's not going to start on the start menu because it's not set as the default. Right now, this map is the default. So to change the default level that you want to start with in your game, you've got to go to project settings and then maps and modes. And under this, you'll notice that, oh, look at that. See, the editor startup map is this, which is fine. But the game default is also the first person map. We don't want that. We want it to be the start menu map. So now when you package your game, this will be the first map you see. And that'll show you the basically the uh, start menu. And then from there, you want to control it to go into the actual first person map. Okay, so today we're going to make a pause menu and a quit game menu. So I'm going to make the interface for each of them first. So widget blueprint, call this pause menu. And I'll just make one as well for the quit game. So, so we call that quit game. Starting off in the pause menu, this one's going to be pretty straightforward. All we want to do is make a single button that allows you to continue the game. So if we center that and make it a bit bigger, I could do it like this. Yeah, this will work. And then put some text inside it. So we'll drag that into the button hierarchy and change that to continue. You only want this button to appear when your game is paused. But in order to do that, to trigger the pause event, you need to create a custom input for that. So we go to project settings and input. We need to make an action mapping for this. So pause game and I'll use, uh, see I could use escape, but the trouble with escape is that in the editor itself, escape won't work. Right, it'll just exit the, the simulation. But this will work in the actual game, so you can leave that there if you like. So I'll use P to pause the game for this. And now we can go back to our pause menu. Sorry, not the pause menu, the custom control. And in here, we need to bring in the pause game event. And we need to make sure this is executable even when it's paused. Uh, or, or rather, that's, that's optional actually. So if you want to use the key binding to unpause the game, then you could make sure this is ticked. But we're not going to tick it. We're only going to use mouse interaction to click on this button to unpause the game. This event is purely just to pause the game. So when it's pressed, we want to pause the game. Let's see. Set game paused and that should be true. And then from there, we want to generate the pause menu widget. So a bit like the start menu widget, we want to create a viewport for that. Here we're going to create widget and we're looking for the pause version. Okay, here we go, pause menu. And then from here, we need to add that to the viewport and just connect this as well. So this should show up when we hit the pause button. Let's just check that and see if it works. So save that and play. Okay, so we're in the game. And if I jump, if I jump and hit uh, P, look at that. That's good. So it pauses the game. However, my mouse has disappeared. This is a problem. I can't uh, actually hit the continue button, no matter how hard I try. So if I hit escape, this will get out of the simulation and allow us to fix this. So we want the mouse to be visible. So after adding the viewport, we need to change the input mode for the game. We want it to be on game only when we're playing, but we need it to be on game and UI, or maybe just UI, when we're in the pause menu. We don't want the game to be moving around at that time, so 
it's only the UI. The widget in focus would be this widget over here, so just drag that in there. Player controller would be the same one as the one before. Now if we compile and play, we're in the game, I jump, hit pause, Okay, so there we go, and mouse cursor is still missing. Okay, well that's weird. Ah, so I can get the continue button to highlight, but the mouse is missing. It might be because it's disappearing into the background. So if we go back to the pause menu and create, let's see, a uh, background blur, it's still, the mouse is still missing. Okay, we need to add a mouse showing thing. So I'm gonna bring this out from the player controller. Let's see if there's something like, yeah, here we go. So show mouse cursor. We want to set that to be true. Now, if we play, it should show itself. Okay, so jump, pause, and there we go. The mouse cursor appears. If we hit continue, nothing happens, but that's okay. We're gonna fix that now. So in the pause menu, we want to create a, an event for when we click this button. So scroll down. And here we can see on clicked, create that event. And then here we want to set the game to be unpaused. So we'll leave that box unticked. And we want to set the input mode to be game only again. And I think the mouse will show, but let's just double check this. So we compile and play, okay, jump, pause, mouse cursor shows, hit continue. This should unpause everything. But now everything is moving together. This is really weird. Okay, so. The mouse cursor needs to be dis needs to be hidden, and the viewport needs to be removed. What we want to do is hide the mouse cursor. From here, we also want to remove the widget. Let's see, remove all widgets. Well, we don't want to do that. What we want to do is remove it from the parent, I believe. Okay, so this should work. Compile, play. We're here. Jump, pause, and obviously the entire game pauses, which is great. Mouse cursor is here. Hit continue. Everything goes back to what it was before. And this should work again if you pause. There we go. And now everything works. So the next thing we want to do is create the quit game menu. So if we open that. We get this screen over here, kind of similar to the pause menu. We want to make at least two buttons here. So one of them being a button for the retry. So if you want to restart the level, for example, and we'll be putting another button in here for quitting the actual game. Get some text in there for each button under their parent hierarchy. For the first text, we're going to call this restart game. And for the second bit of text, it's going to be quit game. Just need to make sure that everything is according to the size we need. The next thing to do is create a quick event for each of these. So for restart game, we want it to reset level. And for now, this is as simple as just saying open level by name. That would be our first person example map, making sure that the input is... Actually, we don't need to do the set input mode here because it's already available inside our example map itself. In fact, even from the start menu, you can already remove this because it's just going to be done within the map. So that will reset it. As for the quit game button, you also want to create a click event for this where it will quit the game. Okay, so let's give that a whirl. Oh, but the problem is we can't get to this menu unless we finish the game. So for now, what I'm going to do is create an input just to trigger that menu. So input, action mappings, trigger quit, we'll use Q for this. And now under custom control, we can create this so trigger quit. There we go. And from here, we want to invoke the quit menu, but we also want the game to pause at that time. So I'm just going to copy all of this and put it over here. So connect that up. And at this point, rather than creating a pause menu, we want to create the quit game menu. Make sure that's added to the viewport. Make sure that's a UI only. Make sure the cursor is being shown. So everything is pretty much the same. Also, while we're at it, the quit game should have some kind of background blur as well, just so it makes these buttons a little more visible. Okay, so now if we compile and play, this should work. Let's give it a go. So if we jump and quit, that pauses the game. Shows our mouse cursor, gives us these two buttons to interact with. And I don't think we can move anywhere else. And if we press quit or pause, it shouldn't do anything because our events are not executing when they're paused. So this is purely mouse input. If I restart the game, it restarts the level. And I think the color, everything is different. Let's see. So this is a blue door, this is a purple mat, and this is a beige door. So if I quit and restart, does it change? It does. So we have green, orange, orange. Great. So it does reset everything. Now, of course, if you quit and actually quit the game, that quits the game. So 
we have the functionality working the way it's meant to be now. And the only thing left you could add here would be something like a, like a statistic, you know, so that it tells you how many chairs you've placed. And the way I would go about doing that is by just putting some actual text in there. So you can drag some text in here, make sure it's on its own level. And in here you would put something like score, maybe, I don't know, five chairs. So when you play this and you quit, it'll show five chairs. We want this to be dynamic based on how many chairs you've placed in the game and it's different every time you start the game. But that's going to be another video all on its own. So that's probably the next one where I'll show you what I did to make the scoring system to keep track of the score up in this top corner based on the time. And then it shows us at the end when you finish. And then you can just click restart and continue playing or you can just quit the game from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you liked it, smash like, hit subscribe, Join the channel, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Rush Code out!